Scrape. It's an interactive web scraping sort of, I don't know, IDE or something. There are a lot of Python web scraping solutions. Scrappy's one of them. All you had to do is define your fields and figure out your expats and If you don't like that, you can use LXML. That's nice because it's sort of more familiar. You can do things that have something to do with the web page, like CSS selects or XPaths. God, XPaths are ugly. And it feels like it works. It's great. Only if, like me, you work on doing it for somebody. You're doing it forever. You're lost in your computer. I actually got asked to do some web scraping for a researcher across, I think it was 10 years of four different medical journals looking for where there was open data and where there might have been conflicts of interest. I decided I didn't want to do that for my career, and that's what it felt like it was do, uh, going. So I don't want to write code using these libraries. I want to hand these researchers and their grad students a tool where they can just do it themselves. I don't care if they're not programmers. And this is what I want it to look like. Let's see if this is clear enough. Did I hit it? Did it work? Ah, good for debugging. Let's see. Play movie. Okay. I'm not getting a movie play here, so I may have to drop out and play you this movie. Played at home. Fancy that. This is exactly why you have warm-ups, because it's not supposed to work like this. No, it's just an MP4 dragged into the... Uh... Let's see if I can get this guy up here. And... There it goes. This is what I want it to look like. I just pipe, typed scrape on a URL. And here it is, PyCon. I want to grab what I highlighted. I want to figure out what that gives me. Get my cursor off of there so you can actually see this. I want to experiment with some simple expats. I have 35 nodes that got selected. Yep, there's 35 sessions. That looks about right. I want to collect it. Boy, that's really bad resolution. So I have two things I have to do for uh, chip uh, for PyCon: is get this working in my slides and get the resolution better. Can you guys read this? Not at all. <laughs> so this thing has selected out all the list items for all the sessions with all the names of the session runners and saved it into a file that it'll write out. And the history of the things that actually made the selection got saved in a history stack, and those got written out too, so they can get replayed. This is how 10 years of uh, medical journals work. Clicking. And it went away. Okay. So this is what gets saved when you save a session. You can edit it, you can comment it. You can replay the session, headless or not. 
it doesn't matter. The head is just kind of a nice thing to highlight something and quickly get to the context of the text without having to, uh, the, the actual HTML text, without having to get to uh, the source and scroll through it yourself. You can do it with XPaths. And you can save the data, which is basically just uh, a table in either JSON, YAML, or CSV. Did that actually, did I actually type CDV in there? That's supposed to say CSV uh, with pandas. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. Thank you. It interfaces with the shell, so my famous researchers can use whatever tool they have, whatever they want, on the data, it can exchange back and forth, or you can run a shell script at the end of a scrape script. So it actually works. You can specify entire files full of URL listings, so you can scrape 10 years all in one night and go to sleep if you want to. And, um, and I built in command completion for myself. And that's it. That's happy me. I don't have to do that for a living. Did I do way under five minutes? <laughs> so um, the University of Chicago opens, you know, let me open source this. So I'm moving it from Bitbucket to GitHub. Uh, the docs are, are, have been there now for a year. Apparently, it's been getting a lot of use. And um, although in the last three days, I guess I must have tried edge cases because I've been fixing little bugs. It's in an alpha stage. I wrote it quickly in about three months and then let it go, and it's been in a year of use. And now, if you want to look at it and play with it and see what it's like to not have to write code, but to just poke around a URL, you can. And uh, I like the hiking artist, so I borrowed uh, images from him. Now, I've got a couple of slides because five minutes is kind of boring. So it's up to you. Do you want to hear anything? Do you want to hear nothing? Do you want to hear Dave Beasley? I can actually do the thing live that, I, that was recorded if you want to see it. Um, or I've got probably about four slides that talks about how bad of a hack this is and what it's built up from and what it uses, which isn't very much, actually. So what would you like? Slides? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, I, I'm glad you asked what's love got to do with it. So I'll, I'll throw you, uh, I'll make a reference to Naomi here and uh, with a thank you. Naomi gave a talk earlier tonight. Uh, and I've known Naomi for many years. And for anybody that looked at Naomi's talk with a wonderment of what does this have to do with me, Naomi and I talked about how much we have in common, we mean everybody. I'm this white guy with a weird name that was born in Chicago, and Naomi coached me on self-acceptance. So this is really important stuff, and I really appreciate Naomi, uh, both the friendship and the, and the talk. So that's what love's got to do with that one. So now to scrape. <laughs> So I had some researchers request scraping for lots of years of medical journals I mentioned. They were looking for where there's open data. Clinicaltrials.gov is a place that has uh, clinical data, and cancer research tends to be 10 years long. So they really wanted to look over a lot of years. They don't know how to specify what they want because they don't know what they want even when they think they know what they want. It didn't take me long to realize that was an impossible task that I got assigned to, and I just wanted a way out, and scrape was my way out. <clears throat> so, click. Unfortunately, the code is the worst of one person agile that you'll ever see. It is literally me 
beginning to code up things in LXML, and within a week realizing this is going to be terrible, I better do something interactive, and pretty much hacking things together reactionary style, week after week, meeting with uh, these professors probably three times a week, every time forehead slapping as I left, and then spending a day coding up how am I going to get out of having to do this or having to ask them these questions again. So I've tried to clean it up, but it's really kind of a mess, which is why I hate the thought of putting it up on GitHub. What's interesting about it, since I'm an old Unix guy, is I kind of wanted it to look like a shell, like Bash or, good heavens, the researchers used Command on Windows, and I forced them to use Bash because they couldn't get to a lot of their data. But it's kind of a shell, but it's not. So I've made it interface with the shell. It has variables and output. It has some simple concept of um, um, name scoping. Uh, and it basically uh, tries to simplify uh, LXML for the non-programmers. Um, except you can't get away with not knowing uh, either CSS selectors or XPath and hope to scrape a web page. And thankfully, there's documentation elsewhere for that. So I took advantage of that. That was one, my, my one out, my one thing that I forced on them. <clears throat> that my typos are, are fantastic. That should be no loop control because uh, LXML gives you basically node control. So if you select a bunch of uh, list items, as I did for the uh, uh, PyCon uh, session staff, list items were all the sessions. Uh, when you apply a command, it applies to all the nodes that got selected. So it uh, multiplies, and it actually is really pretty nice in a shell, uh, in a shell context. It's built from command. I kind of think, in some ways, I'm pushing the envelope on command. It's 90,000 lines in one file. It's an ugly, ugly, ugly command. Because it's one class, I didn't break it up. So Dave Beasley's uh, face is uh, contorting for good reason here. And I use Selenium as a front-end interface. It's optional. If it goes head full, it pops up Sele I, an instance of Selenium without any of your plugins. It creates a new temporary user just like Selenium does. So plugins and all these things that normally would get in the way of scraping don't. That becomes a constant. So that's a really handy thing. And I used um, Kenneth Reitz Envoy for calling out and interfacing with the shell, except I modified it a little bit. I think I fixed one bug, and I added command completion because I like, um, I like command completion. So I have command completion both inside the shell and for the file system and for uh, shell commands outside. And I did a really bad job of a plug-in system, but enough to get the two plugins these guys needed. There's a whole bunch of commands that are available, and they basically boil down to tree control, and an LXML interface, history and script control. So you can, you can issue a lot of commands, but only the commands that affect the DOM, that affect the tree that you're looking at, are the ones that get saved in the history, and that winds up what you can uh, save as a script. You can then run back headless and in loops and across thousands of URLs if you want. Um, you can pass scrape variables out to shell commands and come back with results and store them in scrape variables. I, not that I know you'd want to, but I did that. And, um, and there's a whole bunch of things for settings of the shell like whether you want it headless or head full, whether you want to turn off globbing for some reason and so forth. And data is a simple table. It's you define a table and that becomes a file you save and you define a variable and that basically becomes a column because scraping on a DOM, you could have multiple, you know, more than one instance, one, more than one value. So that's what happens. That's how it works. Um, and for no good reason, I, I define three classes of virus. So I have three, basically, dicts that hold the virus. And uh, local virus don't get written out anywhere. They're for your intermediate convenience, and there is, a, there is a use case for that. 
global vars are if you want to save a URL that you want to repeatedly go over but modify the end of it. And then the normal class of vars from what get output to tables. And that's pretty much it. Problems with this tool is that unfortunately it's useful in surprising ways. I never thought last year, the first time I used it outside of this medical journals was on uh, the PyCon session staff to see how many we needed to see if I needed to tweet out and get more people. I wound up taking somebody's talk from PyCon 2013 that was about LXML, and I looked at some CSS construction he had, and I didn't know what it did. And I used Scrape to use it piece by piece, each time seeing the output and what it created. And it was incredibly uh, instructional. So, uh, so that's a real problem, because I wind up using it for things where I really probably shouldn't. It's headless, so you can do mass scraping, but there's probably better ways. I, I know the medical journals that uh, our researchers wanted said, please don't hit us more than once every 30 seconds. So I don't have any timers built in, and that means those researchers could get themselves in trouble. The other problem that's a problem is that uh, Selenium and LXML return back, for example, if you have a div with a class and ID, the class might come first out of LXML and then the ID. And I kind of expected that that's the source of the page and that Selenium would give it back in the same order, and it doesn't, which makes searching by dragging something across a web page and then searching through the entire DOM for it kind of not as useful as it could be if all those things were sorted. So that's a, that's a problem that I don't, haven't, haven't found a way to deal with. It might be slow, I haven't really ever noticed, but so what? It's a scraper. And um, it's a hack. It's a terrible hack, and it's terribly useful. And there's no tests on it. If, if I really wanted to rewrite it someday, and when I look at it, it needs to be rewritten, I have no idea how I'd rewrite it. And I guess that's all I have.